Well, the Raiders versus Lions game is currently pending. Uh, is that's Monday Night Football? There are a lot of games that happen in Week Eight, and there's a lot of craziness that happened too. First of all, my team, the Eagles, are currently at a seven and one record, the best in the NFL. As we beat the Commanders 38 to 31, a bit of a comeback win as we were at one point down 14-3. Which is sort of the opposite of the Jets game when we were up 14-3 and wound up blowing our lead in our only loss of the entire season. Also, the Commanders have dropped to, I believe, 4-4 four and four now. I'm pretty sure that the Commanders are at 4-4 four and four right now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm... I'm wait. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they won week seven. Oh, wait, no, they lost week seven. They're three and five. They are three and five. The Jets, speaking of which, they had an ugly win over the Giants. They're four and three. The Giants are right now down to two and six. I'm not going to say that's totally impossible for a two and six team to make the playoffs. The Jacksonville Jaguars did get that feat done last year. The Commanders in 2020 got done, although they only had a seven and nine record to end the year with. And it was also done by the Bengals of 1970. Um, the Lions and Steelers of last year also nearly made the playoffs at the starting two and six. Um, they both went nine and eight, but not having control of their own destiny and losing tiebreakers is what kicked both teams out of the playoffs. Nonetheless, um, for the Giants, their hopes are looking dim. That was also considered to be the worst football game since 1988. It was 13-10. It went into overtime. A lot of people saying the Giants should have won because the refs let the Jeffs break the rules. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding that game. Ultimately, it was just a very messy game. Also, in case you're wondering, the um, Jets are still not in a playoff picture because they lose the head-to-head -head tiebreak against the Steelers. Um, who are also 4-3. and three. In the NFC, um, I mean, the AFC North, Browns and Bengals are also 4-3. and three. Bengals are last in the division despite having a winning record after they beat the 49ers. Browns lost to the Seahawks, and they still, you know, have that 4-3 record. So, it's a very... Difficult picture to predict who's going to win these wild cards with all these teams so close. Well, I'm pretty confident what's going to happen is that the Ravens are going to win the NFC North. They are six and two, and yes, while six and two teams have not made it to the playoffs before, it'll be very hard. They would have to have a collapse, um, honestly, to a greater scale than what they had in 2021, which obviously involved them starting off eight three and losing their next. Their final six games to go eight and nine, missing the playoffs, dropping them to last place in the division. When they were at one point the number one seed in the AFC, and they dropped all the way down to number twelve. That was a major um, collapse, in part because the top seed in the AFC that year only went twelve and five. But still, that really just um, should not have happened. And I think that the Ravens are in a better position this year. Bengals are weak, and they haven't, you know, made that fiery comeback they were between 2022. Then again, they still have time to. Um, still have time to come back on their season. But it takes a lot. And, and also, yes, the Ravens won. The Ravens won. I think in the AFC, every single division winner right now is actually 6-2 and two right now, which is weird to see. Dolphins beat the Patriots, so they're, um, you know, back up at 6-2. and two. Chiefs are at 6-2 and two after their loss to the Denver Broncos. It was the Broncos' first win over the Chiefs since 2015, as a matter of fact. Broncos are still 3-5 um, and, and in last place in the division, um, even with this you know, major win. Taylor Swift wasn't there because she's to prepare for a concert in Argentina. And the Broncos were playing Shake It Off in the stadium after their win. 
they had to clear snow before the game because it was a major snowstorm and a high temperature during the game was only about 28 degrees um, as that big Arctic front currently moves through our nation. The first part of the Arctic front has already hit here but stalled south. So while New York City was kept in the 50s in the afternoon yesterday, it did hit 85 in southern Delaware, which I found weird. It was supposed to go all the way up to about 66 in the suburbs here and in the city too. New York City so far has actually been capped off at 59 with it being 63 in my suburbs. So we've currently seen cooler weather. So one front didn't make it as far north as expected. It's going to be retreating and um, before you know it, it will be in the mid 30s on the island and the city. So we could have a very early freeze this year. We could have some very early snow this year. In any case, now that we're getting derailed. Um, speaking of the rest of the AFC West, Raiders, we don't know yet. Chargers, they won on Sunday Night Football against the Bears. They are 3-4. and four. Bears fall to 2-6. and six. They're barely ahead of them. They're barely behind the Packers. Packers are 2-5. and five. They dropped four in a row. They most recently lost to the Vikings. The Vikings are now 4-4, four four, so they actually won three in a row. Um, so the Vikings are now second in the division, and they are threatening the Lions. I think the Lions do hold a tiebreaker with the Vikings right now, but I'm not sure. But if the Lions lose and they're 5-3, and three, it's possible that the Vikings could, you know, seriously challenge the Lions, which at first no one thought was possible because, you know... The Vikings start off the season 0-3 and then 1-4. They can make a comeback on their season in a big way. Um, 49ers, they've started off with the Eagles as the longest undefeated team in football. But they lost three straight. They lost to the Bengals. Um, they lost three consecutive games. They're now thirty. Um, they're now five and three, and with a Seahawks win, they're five and two. They now control the um, NFC West. I'm not going to go, you know, all out into um, into these games. What I do want to say is that as of right now, the playoff picture looks blurry with all these tiebreakers. So I'll have to. So maybe tomorrow, after the Monday night game gets settled, even though it shouldn't impact any playoff standings, I guess I'll make a video that highlights which team is going to be which. Um, because as of right now, there are a lot of amazing things the 2023 football season could produce. It's likely that the Dolphins win their first game or make it past the wild card round for the first time since the year 2000. We could see um, the Lions win their first playoff game make it past the wild card for the first time since 1991. And in 1993, that was the last time they actually won their division. The Jets are still in a relatively decent position to have their first playoff appearance since 2010. But of course, one cannot remember what happened last year. We started off 5-2. and two, then they went six and three, seven and four, and then lost their final six games to kick them out of the playoffs. One cannot forget what happened that year. And also, as of now, they don't own a tiebreaker against the Steelers. That tiebreaker against the Steelers is actually what kicked them out of the playoffs in 2015, the last time they had a winning season when they went 10 and six. They couldn't make the playoffs though, because at that point, there were only two wild card teams, not three. And the Steelers controlled the tiebreaker, which put them in and, again, kicked the Jets out. Fun fact, there's also the Steelers who um, who ended the Jets' playoff run in the AFC Championship round back in 2010. So, you could see there's a bit of animosity between Steelers and Jets fans. Whew. So, 
there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the um, football universe, and we'll, and it can go a million different directions. So it'll be fun to see as you go on. Some teams, you know, had buys already. Some teams didn't. Some teams had buys this week. So you know, it's just interesting to see. Oh, and one also one important thing I forgot to mention in this video: the Carolina Panthers have won their first game all season, so they're one and six. They beat the Houston Texans, who were previously three and three, and now they're three and four. So, again, a pretty embarrassing loss. I'm pretty sure that the um, that the Titans are now two and five, although maybe they're three and four now. I don't know about the Colts. They think that they also might be in a three and four position. Um, as we see the AFC South going all different directions.